the central bank, they've confirmed some changes today to mortgage lending limits for first-time buyers. They have Bring indeed. us up to speed. Yeah, so after a process that lasted 18 months, a consultative process that, la that lasted 18 months, the central bank r r r have outlined new rules that are going to take effect in January. And basically the top line is that up until now, you could only borrow up to three, three and a half times your salary, or if there was a couple, three and a half times your combined salary. But from January, you'll be able to borrow four times your salary. Um, now, I suppose it's important to look at this in context, because the rules were introduced in the post-crash period, and they made absolute sense in 2010, 2011, 2012, because apart from anything else, up in, in, during the boom years, the banks were just crazy. Like they were like some kind of drunk gambler in a Vegas casino, throwing money at, at, at people. And as a result, they were giving people mortgages that were like five, ten times their salaries. And they were saying, Had you, you want a 100% mortgage? No problem. And maybe take 105% so you can go on a nice holiday after you've bought the house. Because it's really stressful buying a house. And it was just this insane stuff. So after the crash, the central bank said, you will never, ever do that again. So it put these rules in place for the banks that said you can't lend more than 3.5 times somebody's salary and a first-time buyer is going to get, can, can, will need a deposit of 10% and a second-time buyer will need a deposit of 20%. But the rules really aren't fit for purpose right now because things have changed. Pro house prices have gone up dramatically. I mean, the cost of a, a, new, a new house has gone up 83% since the rules first came into effect. So this whole three and a half times your salary, while, while it's still sensible to have rules, they're just not fit for purpose. And the reason for that is, let's say if you're a couple and you're earning 80 grand combined, which is a good salary, like, it's a, like yeah. that, that should be enough to buy a house. Mm -hmm. But what that allows you to get, it allows you, it qualifies you for a mortgage of around 270, 280,000 euro. Now, if you look at daft.ie or myhome.ie and you're looking in Dublin, say, you'd struggle to get a house for yes. 280 grand. So under the new rules, you'd be able to borrow 320,000 euro. Now, that's not going to get you a big palatial house in Dublin, but it'll at least allow you to buy a house in lots of places in Dublin. And I think that's why the rules, the rule change was needed. Absolutely. Um, they've redefined the term first-time buyers. And I think this is a really good thing. They have, because the, 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 a first-time buyer in times past, as in today yeah. and yesterday, was, you know, you were buying your very first house, right? That was it. End of story. It was really black and white. But what it didn't take into account was, let's say if you were part of a separated or divorced couple and you no longer had a house, but you were with a partner uh, who, was, who was going to be a first-time buyer, yeah. you, you were never going to be included in the first-time buyer catch, or, or cohort. And similarly, if you had gone bankrupt or declared yourself insolvent and lost your house as a result, you were still classified as a second-time buyer, So, which meant you couldn't take advantage of any of the things that a first-time buyer can take advantage of. So under the new rules, if you lost a property as a result of a legal separation or a divorce, or if you lost a property as a result of a bankruptcy or an insolvency, you're basically starting with a clean slate and the banks will have to consider you a first-time buyer, which means that all of the rules that apply to first-time buyers but not second-time buyers will apply to you. And I think that just makes sense because mm -hmm. it means that you know people who have got into difficulties in the past aren't forever st don't forever have this millstone around their neck. And it means they can start again financially. How will this affect first-time buyers then who have mortgage approval but haven't found the house yet? That's not really clear yet because the rules don't come into place until January, right? So let's say the bank is, you've got all the, 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 the dots, the I's dotted and the T's crossed mm. and everything's done and it's based around 3.5 3 times your salary. I mean, we don't know yet if the banks will have the flexibility to say, okay, well, the mortgage we've approved you for is three and a half times your salary, but the rules are changing in eight weeks. So if you find a house that's four times your salary, well, we'll approve you for that. It might be that the banks will make you go through the whole process oh, no. again. But like I say, oh. like I understand why that's, you know, you could, you'd be going, oh no. But it, it, it's not as complicated as it sounds because basically it's just collecting all the paperwork again, which is a pain. I'd love to think that the banks and the central bank would say, listen, you've done all of that stuff. You don't have to now just do it again for the sake of the eight-week delay. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully a little bit of common sense will okay. prevail there. But it, it, we don't know for sure. Uh, Brezzy, you've been very open uh, about your struggles to get on the property ladder. Never mind the... the, the <laughs> For now. <laughs> just the knife is, yeah. but what do you make of all these changes? Uh, I don't know, to be honest with you. I, I, just, I just know that 
you know, you look at the work Rory Hearn speaking about the idea around the the one thing I do know is that when we have kids who are homeless, that's not good enough. There's a housing crisis, and sometimes I think these things aren't going to solve it. And you know, you talk to any economist, they they keep saying supply, supply, supply. That's what will solve yeah. the issue. And I know it might help some people, but I think we've we've other issues within our society that we have to we have to look at. And having kids in hotel rooms and homeless is not good no, enough, in my no. opinion. No.